This is what the inside of a Torquedo battery looks like. It's a bunch of 18650 cells, but they've got it potted in epoxy down here so that you can't remove the, bat the cells and replace them. When they go bad, you have to buy a whole new battery pack. And I don't know what this batch of cells would cost if you got them new. I mean, a couple hundred dollars at most if you got them at a surplus place. But, since they've got them epoxied in place, you can't replace them. And Torquedo will sell you a new battery pack for $999. The other thing is that there's a circuit board in here. There's there's three pieces to the motor. There's the leg that has, you know, goes down in the water and has the propeller, and that has a circuit board in it and the motor both under the water. And those housings leak and then that part's ruined. You can't just get two 12 volt batteries, connect them together to make 24 volts, and then run your torpedo off of that. Because this special battery goes in here, and then there's this circuit board that's also a part of the battery box. So without that, your motor's not going to run. And then the handle part has its own circuit board in here and a nice little display that will tell you how much battery remains and other less relevant information and then there's the leg which has the propeller and the motor and another circuit board in it so each it, it was deliberately designed in three pieces with the circuit that runs it divided up into three separate circuit boards so that you'd have to buy their battery and their speed controller and the leg part you would have to use. But yeah, it, it, they made it a lot more complicated than it had to be by dividing the circuit up into three different pieces and putting one in each section. And that was to make sure that you could not replace a battery or do any kind of maintenance yourself. And you can't use a normal RC speed controller. You have to use their handle because it's not, the speed controller isn't all in here. I mean, some of it's here and some of it's down at the bottom of the leg where water leaks in and then ruins that part. So basically a really bad design and the reason they wound up with this bad design was because they were designing it in such a way to prevent you from being able to fix it. Okay, so these three legs don't seem to work. And two of them make an E45 and one makes an E30. So I'll have to look up what those error codes are. But this one here also makes an E30. And I took this one apart. And they, they put a circuit board in this unit underwater and it leaks. And then the motor doesn't work. And I guess that's one cause for an E30, because that's what this one is telling me. And also kind of interesting, it uses a brushless motor, like a three-phase motor. And that's the motor. That's it. That's, you can see, like, relative to my hand, it's tiny. It's a thousand-watt motor. So, it'll make, if it had 100% efficiency, it would make 1.3 horsepower, not the 3 horsepower that they claim. I think that's 3 horsepower equivalent to some imagined standard. And 
and I can spin the motor pretty fast and, and this shaft turns very slowly. And that's why this little motor can make a thousand watts because it probably spins at 10,000 RPM or more. And then this gear reducer slows that down to a speed that the prop can use. And that's actually a really nice gear reduction unit. And I mean, it wouldn't matter for an outboard, an electric outboard, but no backlash at all in that thing. That is, does it say what the ratio is? I'm not sure unless that's it way up there, one to eight. I don't know. It'd be easy enough to put a mark here and a mark there and then just turn and, until it went once around and, and count turns there. But at any rate, that's what they look like inside. And this tiny electric motor and this circuit board are in the underwater part in here. And there's there's a gasket here, a gasket there, and if, if that le or, and a gasket for the prop shaft. And any one of those leaks and then you've got that. I really like having the motor up top and just some gears down here which are a lot more resistant if you get a little moisture in there. But I do have two of these lower units that appear to be good. I have two of these handles. I have two batteries. Like I said, these three legs and this handle appear to not work. And then I've got two more legs here. This upper one is the one where the shear pin was off on the propeller. And it did give an E45 error, like if I would really spool it up quick. But after I did it a few times, it stopped making the error. So that may be a good leg. And it was red tag. Oh yeah. Propeller doesn't spin fast enough to propel the boat. Well, the shear pin is a pretty good explanation of that. Oh, yeah. And this one did not work for me. But the tag here said broken pin on the motor cable. And I got a few spare motor cables. So I guess this one I'll take apart and try connecting just to the board down there at the motor and see if I can get the motor to... If I open it up and it's full of corrosion, that's that, right? But otherwise I'll try connecting a different plug to the motor and if that turns then I'll reassemble the whole leg. And this one that is apparently good. I don't know for sure, but it did run for me right now. That's the one that had all the fishing line. And that was kind of burnt there. And I don't know that... It may have just cut out on like a thermal overload and was still hot when they diagnosed it and it works now. I'm not sure. But once again, I've got a bunch of parts here, so I can take that hydrofoil and the motor mount stuff off of one of these bad motors to repair that one. My best guess is that I'll probably have three working legs. Um, there's two working batteries, two working handles. Oh yeah, I need... 
there's these magnets, right, that you put on here and attach to yourself with the lanyard. So if you fall overboard, it shuts off. And I think I only have one lanyard. So like if anybody else has a broken torpedo and would let me have their lanyard, that would be convenient. Or I can just mold a piece and it's just a magnet in here. So I can mold, make a mold from this and make my own lanyard if necessary. And let's see, is there anything else to say about these? German engineering putting all this below water. I'm surprised. This looks like the kind of design an American would make and then ship to China for manufacturing. That gearbox I can believe is German. And I don't know, I guess that's all folks for now.